Well, holy crap, guys, that was a lot. Hello and welcome to another Jurassic World Evolution 2 video, where today we've got our third and final dev diary until the game's launch in just under two weeks. Good God, it's so close, I cannot wait. And this dev diary, well, let's just be real, it was a huge shocker and stuff. Like, when I heard that they were doing one more, I was really excited because, like, the last two, like, gave so much information with new dinosaurs and new things to explain, and this one did not disappoint, at least not entirely. Now, I'm not going to talk about too much of it because a lot of it is actually sort of recaps, unfortunately, such as them discussing how the guest facilities will be working, how the ranger teams have been modified, the veterinary unit, the control room and hiring staff, which we've already had stuff on that we've already talked about in the past. I don't think we need to go over it again. But we're going to first talk about the new dinosaurs that have been revealed, which there's technically only been one. Some have already been shown off, but not like, you know, extensively talked about. But let's talk about the biggest one, of course, which is the Spinosaurus. Yes, the Spinosaurus, it's finally shown off and oh my god. Oh my god, it was such a pleasure to see it. And the fact that it looks almost exactly like it did in Jurassic Park 3, even better. And we don't get to see too much of it, we just get to see it walk by a viewing vent, but oh my god, I was like, Spinosaurus, there you are, and he just, he just looks so good. And also, we do get actually one fully new species, which is the Tapijarosaurus, which is our newest collection to the Tyrannid to the pterosaurs which oh my god how many pterosaurs do we have now I think we've got I think we've gone over 10 like I don't know there's been so many guys and we get better looks at some old favorites like the Indominus Rex in a new skin and we get to see some of the more off-mentioned dinosaurs that they sort of gave little hints to like the Trophionagus we get to see how the skin customization works with them, as we get to see, like, them all have the same pattern, but different variants on each one, which I gotta say, despite me not being too happy with the fact that they went against what they originally said in, in the skin customization, I actually still do like it because they do show it to be more unique, because you can have one be fully green, or one with a green sh pattern on it and be pale, or you know, a fully pale one, and they show it very well. And we get more dinosaurs like the Tyrannodons breaking out. We don't get to see them attack anybody, unfortunately, but we get to see how they will interact with the environments around them in a way, because we see one Tyrannodon actually fly and land on top of the um, one of the Jurassic Park signs, I believe it was, and it looks really good as it just roars and, you know, flies off into the air, going to probably kill someone, you know? Who knows? Let's, we'll find out when we play the game. And we get to see a lot more of, like, you know, how the terrains will be different and the storms, which they did a little post a few days ago that I didn't do a video on, but it covered, like, each different biome, including, like, the storms that came with them. And I gotta say, it looks really, really nice nice and especially like how they showed in some of the images like the snowstorms you'll be able to not see anything same with the sandstorms and many people are worried about two of the environments i believe it's the Tasia and um uh alpine because they look so similar which i agree with they do seem quite similar and i do wish that for this they went more into like the biomes they only give like a brief mention of it with um the what was it the tropical and how Isla Nublar and Isla Sorna are returning, which we already know because of Chaos Theory. And, like, my god, like, we get to see, like, a storm fully in action, which, I gotta say, having so much trouble with, um, tornadoes in the first game, this one looks even worse. But, there is a way to fix, to stand up to these storms, apparently, because they act you know in the first game we had the storm protection building which did cost a fair penny and stuff to research and make and they would sort of protect your facilities from like minor storms 
Now apparently we won't be having that, but you'll be allowed to upgrade all of your buildings, like mainly your research ones and security ones, to be able to protect themselves against storms, which is really good. So it only increases the cost of, you know, the building that you're making by a small amount it seems actually. So that sounds really good to see. Instead of us having to work in this big building that, you know, only covers a certain few amount of buildings, now we can just have the regular buildings and then upgrade them to protect against certain storms, which gotta say, really do like that as well. It's like they really go into detail about things like they already have said, but with that they did a lot better. And for new dinosaurs actually, we get to see a finally an actual good look at Diplodocus actually. We get two shots, I can't remember where it was, but it showed Diplodocus like in the water and two new patterns I gotta say, along with some Chasmosaurus, which I'm pretty sure we did see Chasmosaurus in the first Dev Diary, like I think it was like at a far distance. I, I could be wrong though, I, I'm not sure, but I gotta say it's really good to see both those guys back. And it's making me wonder what dinosaurs aren't going to be coming back, you know, because we've gotten so many of them confirmed. And also, we get to see, finally, raptors climbing the fence. Well, actually, not really. We get to see a shot of a raptor standing on top of the fence, which, I mean, that just looks so cool. Just like it's standing on there like, you know, I've broken out and I didn't even need to break the fence. Like... I cannot wait to see that. And I've also heard that Dilophosaurus will also be able to climb fences. Correct me if I'm wrong in that in the comments, which if it is, it's going to be really cool. But they haven't said any other dinosaurs will be able to, which I do want to question because like Indoraptor is going to be in the game. Will that mean that Indoraptor can climb? Because like Indoraptor is a good climber. We've seen that in the move in Fallen Kingdom. So I think it would make sense to have Indoraptor be able to climb as well. But that's just me. Maybe it maybe you could jump over could you imagine that guys like an indoraptor just like you know what saying this is nothing and jumping over a fence instead that would be so cool and so frightening because then you'd be like uh how do you contain this thing but we see the raptor go on and of course yep there's the shot of the spinosaurus which also who's who else thinks that the next the final species field guide before evolution 2 comes out is going to be spino because that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking good old Spino Boy is going to be our final species field guide until the game's released. There might be some afterwards, but I think that's going to be it. But one thing we still haven't gotten an answer for, unfortunately, is the mysterious aquatic reptile that was shown in the last Dev Diary, which most people believe it to be the Plesios, not Plesiosaurus, the Tylosaurus, that's the one. But we still haven't gotten that confirmed. Plus, we also still haven't, we haven't seen like Pluridon, we haven't seen the Lasmosaurus, which I kind of am glad we haven't seen them, but I still want to see them so bad, guys. Come on, can we just get to the ninth, please? I just want to play this game. Is it too much to ask? And there's this one shot, I, I gotta find it. Where is it? Ah, there it is. Found it. It's a shot where it shows Brachiosaurus and Gallimimus, and I gotta say, this... The game looks so much better, guys. Like, the the original game, like, I love Jurassic World Evolution, but it looks so plain and, like, one color. Even with the scenery items and stuff, it just felt like, you know, it wasn't really a real place. This, on the other hand, with the dinosaurs and, like, all the different types of trees that you can see, and, like, you know, them looking not all the same, because that's the beauty of being multiple biomes instead of just all islands being tropical. Especially because, you know, considering La Isla Sorna shouldn't have been tropical because, you know, it was a redwood forest in the Lost World. Everybody seems to forget that for some reason. Thanks, Jurassic Park 3. But, like, oh my god, it just looks so good. And maybe it's also because it's in beta, but my god, the game looks so much better and I cannot wait to see, like, what else you can do in this game. Like, I know a lot of people are still annoyed with it, but you know what? I'm happy with this. Like, I remember when rumors were first starting and I was going to be annoyed, but seeing how far they've changed it so far, like, yes, it is the same game basically with everything from the first game, but more. But that works for me because it has things that we weren't able to. There are some things that 
they've added that I am not too thrilled with, which when we play the game, you'll get my review of. And the last thing I want to talk about actually is, well, two things, is the aviary customization, which they show very well. You get to place rocks and all the stuff just like you do with the land dinosaurs, but they don't mention anything for the aquatic reptiles, which I gotta say is really getting me even more worried about that because like one fear many people had with um, Mosasaurus and also Pterodon when the f game was first announced was were they going to be like the Pterodons were in the first game? Just a fishbowl, you built the enclosure and you did nothing else and released the dinosaurs, boom, they were done. It's looking like it's going to be that way for the Mosasaurus and other aquatic reptiles, unfortunately. Sure, they will be able to interact with each other, but we already have confirmation they won't be able to break out, they won't be able to cause any trouble, which is, it's unfortunate, un sadly, but who knows. And also, one other thing, it, the last thing I want to mention before we go, is they do mention something that was kind of alluded to a while ago, and it's that you'll be able to choose in sandbox mode either Jurassic Park or Jurassic World era. Now, a while ago it was stated that for PS4 players and Xbox 360 I believe it was, those players would have to do it, they wouldn't be able to have mixed eras. But it looks like they're going against their original word and now all players, like for any console, computer, it looks like for that it will be no mixed arrows, which is kind of unfortunate, but I think it's understandable because it'd be very difficult to have all of those things from both eras in the game, especially because there's going to be a lot more things in both eras than there were in the first game. But guys, that is going to wrap it up. Spinosaurus revealed, Raptors climbing the fence, Indominus Rex a better look at even, and Tappy Jarosaurus, and Pterodon customization, and so much more. I've probably missed like a few things, of course, because, you know, I'm an idiot and I miss things all the time. But if you've enjoyed this, I would appreciate the like. And guys, we've only got like two more things to do before the game comes out. We've got the species field guide for next week, as long as it actually is a species field guide. Which, do you think it's going to be Spinosaurus? Or do you think they'll actually reveal one of the final aquatic reptiles that they haven't shown, like maybe Lyplerodon or maybe Tapijarosaurus actually, who knows. But if you've enjoyed this video guys, I'd appreciate the like, and if you haven't already, do hit the subscribe button to join the hunt, be safe, and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye bye